Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Darkest Dungeon. Um, this is... This is this is getting good. Uh, we started off last time with doing some really cool stuff, but we're gonna jump right into it as soon as I can. So we only have our first um, we only have our first crew here. We're still getting started, but we did a dungeon and we got kind of the basics down. I noticed a couple people asking about um, like a, a good way to start the game and it de definitely some tips on how to get further in the game. I'm gonna do that a little bit, but I'm not gonna do that that much because I know a lot of you also are um, very much. Uh, experience of the game. Some of you are, at least. Um, so I'm gonna spend I'm gonna spend some time and actually kind of figure this out or, and, and and cover some of it. But at the most part, we're just gonna we're gonna go pretty fast. So at least it's a video. You guys can stop and rewind it if you really miss something. Um, let's see. So the last time we actually got a little bit of stress with these guys. What I like to do is I don't like to take anybody with 50 or more stress. He's at 48. It's almost like, it, at this point, he's close enough where I kind of want to put him in a, like a stress relief zone. However, however, do I want to spend... How much money? We've got money. Do I not want to take him on the next run? I actually probably don't. Simply because of the fact that, you know, let's just put him away. Let's put him away for now. We have it. We can't. Oh, what does he have? He's got God fearing in town will only pray. Okay. Well, never mind. Everything is just, it doesn't matter because he's got to go in here. That's all right. Cool. Whatever. I see. I understand it. It's cool. Um, and retro, original retro is at, let me see. 38. It's not bad. We're probably not going to take him on this run anyway. Uh, we're going to take, um, the occultist because the occultist is in my opinion the best healer especially for later games um there's only <laughs> there's only a couple ways to kind of do this and i think it's it's probably the best I, I think i think the vestal has uh has definitely some good uh, aspects to her and she's definitely good for kind of rallying the troops in the in a creepy in a bad situation however at the same time you don't really want to get in those situations and i think the occultist is going to kind of keep you out of there as much as possible and even then on average the occultist is probably going to do just as much healing or even more than the vestal um I can't really remember where who who signed up, but we're gonna. I know I got a couple people in here. Let's go ahead and put um, Lady Laomi's, the wonderful Lady Laomi's, and then um, let's go ahead and make our vet. Let's go ahead and do this here, since this is the occultist, and since if if you subscribe to my Twitch channel and within the month of June, this is a little bit chilly, but whatever. In the month of June, or even afterwards, and you ask about it, I will give you a uh, a wallpaper that has uh, myself as looking just like an occultist. So I'm gonna make a Danotage. There we go. Um, only thing with him is I like other moves, so we might spend some money to get some other moves. So, well, hold on. We might not be able to do that just yet. No, we can't do that just yet. So it's okay. We're going to take these guys in at the moment. We're going to take um, right at the beginning, just because I'm going to get like a stack of gold, hopefully. I'm going to take um, Lady Laomi's in with us because the Antiquarian um, is the, the best at gathering money and like seriously they she she every every time you loot something or go into something where you think you're gonna get gold from you use the antiquarian you will get i think a good percentage more um let's take homebrew dwarfin uh this should be good for the the ruins it should be fine um does he yeah he's got his heels he's got he's got a stun and he's got a pool that's gonna be good for our crusader to bring him closer so we're gonna go ahead and do this. Let's see, where is the best place to go at this point? The Vestal, the 10% virtue chance is really nice. Um, stun skill chance and swift cloak. Let's go ahead and go in for this. Uh, it's a medium though, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. Let's see, are these two mediums and two shorts? Um, let's take the Vestal item. Actually, no, 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 let's take this. Even though we're gonna, even though it can give us more disease, that bleed and blight will definitely keep us from getting, from having problems later on. Look like, we get, look like we have one trinket. Do we equip any? No. One trinket for move skill chance. So move skill, since I just told you, we're gonna, this guy is a move skill. Um, we want him to actually hit on that. So 20% a two move skill chance means he's going to hit 20% more. Uh, at least have a 20% better chance to hit. So hopefully that will that will work out. And I think, uh, I think we're going to be in good shape. Let's go ahead and take... Um, Oops. Um, we'll take eight of those. We'll take 
8 of the... Or, not 12. If you hold shift, you get the full stack, which we don't need a, any of that. Let's take two of those. We'll take uh, four of those, just because I don't like to bleed. Um, let's take those, and we should... Actually, you know what? I only need to take one. Actually, I don't even need to take any on this one. But I will. I will because it does also get rid of, I think, debuffs. Yeah, it gets rid of debuffs. So we can take those down. Um, yeah, yeah this will work. This will work just fine. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's load this up. Uh, so this, so the ruins are filled with, and you guys can write this down too because this is what I did to, to help memorize this. The ruins are filled with skeletons, which are unholy and can't bleed. Um, and I think, you, I think you can get them to bleed, but it's like really, 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 really hard. Um, so you get the, so no bleeding there. Blight is great for here. So if you get a grave robber, they're good here. Um, they also, there are also humans in here that are, I think also unholy and uh, eldritch. I don't remember that part actually. Um, but there are humans in here and so bleed would be good for them. However, I don't recommend ble bringing bleed in here just for that. If you have it on one of your enemy, on one of your party members, it's, it's fine. But, um, taking that and using it as a, as a crutch to get in here is probably not the best idea. Um, so they're just humans. Okay. But the skeleton is unholy. Okay. Uh, there's also a stress dealing lady that we'll, we'll find out later. I wonder if she is just unhuman. Um, so with this, we're going to definitely, we have a bleed item, but or bleed ability, but we're not going to use that just yet. We do want to, ooh, accuracy base is bigger. Let's go ahead and go for pistol shot because we want to take him out first, even though we got to dodge. It's okay. It's all right. We're going to make it work. We're going to pull him forward. That way we, the crusader can actually hit. Um, this will work too, actually. Let's go for... Let's try to kill him. Okay, got another dodge. Great. Fantastic. Now we can do this, though. Um, so Smite is great for this because Smite is so... Uh, Crusader's probably going to be your best... Best class at the very beginning of the game. He's going to get weaker later, but he's still not going to get bad. Um... Because the Smite versus Unholy, it's going to do a lot of damage. As you can see, a 7 for a level 1 character is pretty good, especially without any trinkets. Um, so he should be dead pretty soon. In the next move, we'll actually use uh, this uh, this third this third item, Grape Shot Blast. To, that way, I think his accuracy is low, but he can still hit. And if it hits all three of them, then we're we're gonna kill the we're gonna kill our skeleton friend and uh, and do a little bit of damage to the other two guys too. Because while they are melee and they do have to move forward, they do a lot of damage and they can actually cause some bleeds, which is a pain in the ass. Let's get our dodge up for this one. Uh, Antiquarian is not good for much in battle, but she is good for a few other things. Uh, we'll get some healings going. So she's he's gonna roll. He's going to roll really, really drastically. There's a few things that's going to happen. He can roll a zero on heals and also cause a bleed. So every chance, uh, every time every time he rolls heals, there's two there's two things that can happen. One, he can either get a really, um, really good or really bad heals. He's usually going to go at the top of the bottom of the scale. He's going to get uh, high heals or he's going to get no heals to one heal. Um, however, at the same time, let's see, can we stun both these guys? No, we can only stun one. Um, let's go ahead and hit him. Um... He can roll low, he can roll high, but on average, he's going to take a, a higher, higher... In the end, he's going to do more, I would say. Um, we can also... Let's go open vein. And he's going to be gonna be dead anyway. Um, so, that's going to be good. But also, the second thing is, he can actually cause bleeding. So, you see the resist there. He can actually cause bleeding when he heals, which can be bad. However, bandages are not super expensive. Just bring a ton with you, and you're going to be in good, good shape. Okay, she, she, she sucks. Sorry, Lady Lamies, but your character sucks, and I'm, I'm sorry I gave that to you. But you're also going to get a lot of money, which you're into, so it's fine. Uh, she's a gold digger! She's a gold digger! But she's fine. She's fine in the A in the booty region. Um, actually, we don't know what's below her. She looks very skinny. Uh, let's see. So... Get a scouting chance. If you guys don't know what a scouting chance is, every time you get into a room and you go to your map, um, actually, you don't even need to go to your map. It'll trigger anyway, but there's a chance that one of your characters will cause your party to get a scout ahead, and you get these, you get to see what is actually ahead. Um, in a room, in a, in a dungeon like this where it's super linear, and I also should have went with the Antiquarian, it's my fault. Um, in a room like this, or a dungeon like this that's super linear, you're going to want to get, you're going to, it doesn't really matter. But you're going to want to know what's ahead. That way you can camp or heal or whatnot. But in a non-linear dungeon, it's going to help you understand what 
direction you want to take it will be so that you can either avoid fights or you can go after your quest items um, as much as possible to keep the uh, keep the the amount at which your RNG is going to wreck you super low um, at this point so here she is she's just human that's fine um, but we're still gonna target her first the guy in the back with the crossbow does a ton of damage but we don't want this stress the stress is always bad um, but now that they haven't gone, we're gonna we're gonna boost this up with some damage or some some buff damage. Now, what am I saying? Some dodge dodge buff. Jesus. Uh, let's see if we can pull her forward as well. That way, the crusader can actually hit. Okay, or not? It misses. Without him having to heal, he actually has a lot of good utilities like that pull, but also a couple other things. We should have actually stunned. I don't think we had that ability though. Hold on. What is that? Our stun. We have to be in the front too. That's why. Okay, I was wondering why I never used that, and that's exactly why. Um, let's go and stun him. Because um, you have to be up front. Well, it's not a bad move, especially because of the shuffle. But we're not playing Torchless, so we won't shuffle that often. For those who don't know what shuffling is, is when you appear in a party and they, they give you a surprised RNG um, pick. The, there is a chance that, one, you'll be debuffed with surprise. But also, you um, have the ability to have your entire party shuffled and in random spots. Which, obviously, can screw up with your, um, your, your momentum and, and your... Um, everything that's going on with your party at the same time you know you kind of sometimes you don't really prepare for that so you can have things like that move that's the whole reason that move exists is if uh, if that happens you can have something to stun the back of the party so that you're or the back of their party rather so that you don't get hit by them however at the same time you want to focus on the first two when you get shuffled like that so that move is pretty bad um, you're not really going to have your occultist up front. It's very specialized, and that kind of causes problems, which I'm not cool with. He's dead. That's fine. Um, so it's, it's kind of, I don't know. I have, I have a bit of a problem with using that at all, but we don't have the, uh, we don't have the guild open yet, so we can't change our abilities just yet anyway. Let's go ahead and pull him forward. This is, uh, whether it hits or not, it clears those corpses, which helps so, so much. Um, yeah, and that doesn't matter. Like I said, it doesn't matter if that hits. It, as long as you use it, it'll clear those corpses and it'll make everything easier. So if it didn't actually hit, it would have pulled him to second, which is good anyway. So uh, that is a great move to have uh, in a lot of different stances. Ooh, stun and pushback. That's that's basically what the Bone Defender is going to do. He's not going to do a whole lot of damage, but he's going to screw with your party. Which is why, you know, some people like to put him down like second after you take out the stress uh, dealer. However, he's not going to do much. And honestly, those moves aren't going to land too often, especially with the right trinkets. So where I just kind of leave it. Just kind of leave it. And I don't really worry about him until the end. Um, I like to deal with the crossbow guy second because he does, he can do a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of damage. So, and there, there's the, there's the pushback anyway that, so he's going to reshuffle back to where we were having him anyway. doesn't really matter too much. Uh, this buff is good to take at the beginning, but I just want to do damage, so we'll just leave it. And we're not taking that much anyway. Mm. Can't do much anyway, just heal. Um, so, one thing you want to avoid when using the Occultist is never give him additional bleed uh, trinkets. It's like, don't give him a better, better chance to bleed. There are certain trinkets that do him very well. Um, that have additional bleed to it, but I would consider, I would always consider avoiding it because it could screw you in the end. Now we're going to take the antiquary and go into the heirloom chest. Uh, if we had a key, well, we do have a key, but we want to save it. The keys will, will open to that pretty uh, easily. It'll also open up a bonus, I think, because like it shows something like a, uh, a secret, secret drawer in the back that opens up more stuff. Um, but the antiquarian with us is going to get a bonus anyway. All right, let's see if we can pull him forward. Yep, there we go. And we can't bleed, so let's go ahead and do a triple. Because these guys these guys are are going to hit kind of hard, too. We don't really want to deal with them. Uh, let's keep the dodge up. What you got next? A bump in the night. Oh, we got it. Yeah, see, he, so he had to stab. He could not shoot with his crossbow because he was too close. That's one thing that you do... Uh, don't necessarily notice all the time. A lot of times, uh, people will say, "Well, people will not think about it." They'll like, "Oh, they'll they'll not pull the the range guy forward because it's like, oh, well, it doesn't really do much to bring him out of position anyway." It's like, well, some of the times it actually does. That's why they move backwards too. That's why they have a lot of moves that moves them backwards. Um, there's a lot of things that that 
give them here we got damage versus human yeah we got minus two dodge it's fine um they're gonna want to move back because they can't do their most powerful strikes they're still gonna strike you but it's not gonna be for nearly as much damage so pulling them forward is it does a double whammy it allows the crusader who can only really attack the first two um for the most part in and it gives him a, a, the ability to go after the strongest characters anyway, but also it takes it does exactly what it does to your party, which allow doesn't allow some of the items to, or some of the abilities to to be used. I don't think we scouted that. I don't think we can see that. It's okay. Um, for this, we're actually going to use the shovel, which I used both of them already, so we're not going to do that. Lock display cabinet. We're just going to go into it. We want the gold. Got a blight, and we didn't bring any anti venom. I didn't think you could get blighted in here. It's okay. She's going to take a little bit of damage. Not much, though. Take this. My heart will burst. You'll be fine, you pansy. And I think we're going after 100% of room battles, so we just got to find the last one. I think this this is probably the last one. It's got a curio in it, um, and it should be fine. As you can see, we can see the trap, too. Um, we can actually take the Altar of Light and do this. Got a buff, which... Isn't what I was going for. I was going for the heal. I don't even remember if that one can heal. But she's going to get damaged, so it's going to help her anyway. Um, oh, we got we to gotta eat. You do want to take... So what I take normally is I take about 8 food um, into a short run. I take about 22 into a medium, into a medium run. And I take at least 28 into a long run. Just because... It's cheap, and the worst thing to do is to fall into a position where you don't have food. Because, for the most part, it's going to be near the end of your run. And if you're in trouble and you don't have food, you're going to, one, you're going to lose You're gonna lose some light. Especially if you're not doing a torchless run. You're going to lose some light, but you're also going to take some damage. And it's like, Because, like I said, if it's at the end of your run and you got to do that anyway, you're not going to want to take the most penalties that you possibly can. You want to limit that for just forever. You can always use you can always use uh, food to heal, like in the middle when and when something is going bad and you don't or or not necessarily going bad, but you don't have any more room in your inventory because it's taking up three stacks. Just eat some of the food. You're gonna heal a little bit. It's not gonna be much. It's not really gonna be worth the healing in in any other circumstance, but it's gonna give you a bonus and you're gonna get rid of something in your inventory for more space anyway. So it's gonna be fine. Just just take take more food than you think you normally need. There's our heals. Heals are going well. Um, let's go ahead. Let's do it again. There we go. The spiders, uh, for some reason, for some reason, spiders give me the worst, worst pains. I don't understand. They always wreck me. They always do something. They always do something bad. And the spiders aren't even that powerful. You can one-shot most of them, and it's a, it's really easy. However, for the most part, you've got so many issues with what's happening. Holy fountain. Let's just do it. See what happens. There we go. That's the one I wanted. Uh, I think that was the same curio as before, but oh well. Uh, let's see if we can scout. If there's any, if there's nothing but treasure in there, there's two fights. We're not taking that. We're not going that way. There's no, there's no benefit to do that. There, those two curios could be good, but not good enough. I'm not gonna take it. So we finished the, uh, finished the, the dungeon. That's all good. Um, yeah, that should be fine. Let's see. There we go. We got fear of beasts. Fifteen percent stress versus beasts. Not good. Um, however. I my brain set is still on like t running a towards this mode like you don't want added stress but you definitely definitely do not want added stress in a, in a torchless run because they that is the that is the main enemy in fact you're going to take more stress damage than you're going to take regular damage and that could get you killed just as fast but in here we want to worry we want to worry about m more about taking more damage and stress yeah it's a problem but it's very it's quite easy to keep it down especially when uh, in between runs you stress heal and you stress heal to take you your your enemies out of uh or your not your enemies your your party members out of under 50 percent 
50 is going to be fine. You keep it under and you'll be good. Anyway, that's going to do it for this week. I think we're or not this week, this day, because I think we're going to do one day, one one video per week in game. And I think that's a, that's a good way to do it. Um, eventually, it'll get to a point where you're not, we're not doing much in a week. We're just kind of testing stuff out and doing very unexciting things. So maybe I'll do two weeks, but I think we're going to keep it down to one. Anyway, if you guys liked the video, please understand that we get so, or I personally get so much benefit out of you guys talking about it and sharing it with your friends. Um, make sure you're following the channels. Make sure you're subscribing to the YouTube channels. Make, you, make sure you're hanging out with all the stuff. Thank you guys so much for joining us today, and I will see you all next time. Have a dark, dark rest of your day.